make some magic happen. Coming through. What a day. What a day, man. I'm telling you right now what's going on. I'm telling you right now what's going on is this guy I got coming on, this man, this awesome guy. He's a 45-year-old young man. He's played tennis his whole entire life since his father, like my dad, taught me when I was age nine. He was five. He was raised in Geneva, Ohio, a top junior player. He played D1 tennis for Elon College, which is now Elon University in North Carolina. Never played professionally. Um, um, didn't start playing until after college. He's in Fort Lauderdale right now, as you can hear. He's the USPTA Grand Prix Men's 35 Division, USPTA Florida District Badass. The guy's got game. He's the director of uh, at, uh, uh, court sports at the Landings in Florida. All right. He's 2017 USPTA. You there? He's a badass. He's everything. He is Chris Cater. What up? Hey, hey, what's going on, Curtis? That's that's one heck of an intro, man. You make me sound good. Well, I had to cut that shit down. I, I, sorry. I had to <laughs> cut that stuff down. Hey, real quick, for those of you that just joined us, please uh, go to YouTube. Check out the Pickleball Show with Curtis Reese. Follow it, subscribe to it, tell us what you like, what you don't like. And we got this good-looking guy right here coming on. Uh, his show is going to drop pretty soon, but f subscribe to us. Did you hear me, Rob? I did that for you. He's my uh, chief content officer. Tells me what to do. Um, well and, done. And then, so anyway, let's, let's get to the fun stuff. Chris, tell us about, let's do the way of pickleball, brother. Tell us what, where, when, why pickleball. Well, the, so the way of pickleball, it all for me, it all started in uh, uh, 2015. So in 2015... Oh, wow. Uh, early on in 2015, I was still down in, in uh, South Florida. I was in Palm Beach, and the, um, the guy who was, who was manning our pro shop on the weekends at the beach club, he started talking about pickleball and all his endeavors in pickleball, and he's, he's starting to crush some people. And, you know, I hadn't played. I'm a tennis guy, and, and I, I, sure, Wayne, okay, sure, sure. Well, um, one thing leads to another, and, uh, and by... By the fall, I find myself in Savannah, Georgia at the Landings Club, okay? Yes. And uh, I've, I've taken on the role of director of court sports, and I, I fast learn that one of the reasons why I was there is, um, is there hadn't been a whole lot of uh, warm and fuzzies around pickleball at the Landings Club. <laughs> warm and fuzzies. So, you know, there's, there, were, um, there were four courts, okay, and, and there were a few people playing. But those people were all passionate. They were all fired up about it. And, and you know, my little brain's thinking, well, shoot, that one of the reasons I'm here is because there wasn't a whole lot of, uh, you know, of interest and, and whatever. So let's let's start to fire it up. Yeah. And, uh, and and we did. Um, you know, I I embraced it and, and we started to learn about it and teach it and, and run events and all that stuff. And, um, you know, fast forward, what, almost eight years? Yeah. And, um, man, we jumped on that train, and it's a sure is a good thing we did. In 2015, because it's, uh, is that what you said? In 2015? 2015. Yep. 2015 is when we started. And that's at the landings, right? At the landings Savannah, Club. Georgia. Yes. I don't know why I thought you were in Florida. Oh, that's all, all your accolades uh, are in Florida. And, yeah. You, so I, I, I was a Florida guy. I'm a, uh, as you said, I'm a small-town Ohio guy, born and raised. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Ohio is a great place to be from, but unless you, like, <laughs> you know, cold and dreary and not seeing the sun and no championship uh, sports teams get out of Ohio and uh, go somewhere else. So I, <laughs> I took my talents to South Beach I believe that. And, and and then made my way up to Savannah, Georgia, which is probably the furthest north I will ever go again. Uh, wow. Wow. That's cool, man. I love that story. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, that's um, so yeah, it's Savannah, Georgia. He's at the Landy's Club. It's a very, very exclusive club. Um, and it's a very nice club. Hey, tell us about the two uh, guys you have on board real quick doing pickleball. Sure. So uh, so our, um, way back when, 2015, I was one of three professionals on the staff. And uh, fast forward to 2023, we have 11 professionals on the staff, wow. um, two of which are, are pickleball only. Uh, they're from really close to the birthplace of pickleball. They're out from the, you know, the Seattle, uh, Bainbridge Island area. Um, Alex Fox, wow. uh, who's our head pickleball professional, and Bradley Morse, nice. who's uh, who's our uh, another one of our pickleball professionals. 
both doing a great job knocking it out of the park for us. We'll get them on someday. So tell us about uh, when you play, or, or uh, do you have a preference of what you like to play? Uh, mixed doubles, singles, doubles, or do you play at all? Um, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm, I love doubles, love men's doubles, um, and I'll grind on a singles court all day too. <laughs> um, I, I'm, uh, I'm not the huge uh, mixed doubles guy, and and really I think it's probably because um, I don't prefer to take over three, four fifths of the court <laughs> and tell my partner to go stand in the alley or the cover your line. Um, you know, I'm an equal opportunity player, <laughs> so. I'll, uh, I'll I'll smash paddles in the middle every once in a while, but um, you know, uh, I, I don't like gentlemen. to tell my partner to c cover their line. Um, oh, but lo so love love men's doubles, love mixing it up out there, and um, and uh, you know, after every doubles, you know, uh, two or three hour session, uh, I'm always the one who's asking who's up for a little singles. Let's grind it out. <laughs> So you're crazy. All right. So let's talk. Let's, <laughs> let's talk about your, uh, do you have a, do you have a paddle or a brand that you or your pros like, or what do you think? Yeah. So, um, uh, we, we were, we were big paddle tech for a long time, mm -hmm. a whole lot of paddle tech, but you know, with the, you know, with the evolution of the, you know, the carbon face and, and, um, the, the grit and texture on there, yeah. um, I, I'm a huge diadem warrior edge guy. There you go. That's my, that's my paddle. Um, I think I've got it in about four different, uh, four different versions or colorways or whatever. Um, I, the, the diadem guys, they, when I call them, they're like, all right, Cater, what do you want now? <laughs> um, Who's your so we do rep? a lot of that. Who's the diadem we, we've rep got there? the, what's that? Who's the diadem rep there? Uh, uh, Fabio. Okay. Cool. Fabio, uh, Pigini, Piagiani. Um, yeah. good. good. Good guy, good. good guy, and he was actually in the uh, he was in the Savannah area before I got here. He was uh, he was down he was in in our neck of the woods. So. Wow, that's cool. Yep. So uh, yeah, so we do a lot a lot of that. A lot of uh, uh, we're we're moving the carbon paddle CRBN. Uh, we're moving um, uh, Revlon, yeah. the Revlon paddle. Mm -hmm. um, doing a lot of those as well. So good. So at at, yep. the, at the club is uh, how many courts do you have? What's the uh, what's the environment there? Everybody happy family? Everybody's everybody's playing nice together. Yeah. Good. Yes, we've Good. got a great vibe at the club. Um, everybody's playing all the time. Awesome. You know, we 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 were at uh, three courts plus a plus a temporary court when I got there. We're at um, we're at fourteen courts plus a standalone ball machine court right now. So fifteen. That's and um, and I I. We're working with our strategic planning committee and a land planning architect because the, n the next phase of, of development that's going to kick through next year is, um, is, is put as many additional courts as, as our site can hold, plus all of the, um, you know, all the other uh, surrounding amenities like uh, a pickleball specific building pro shop in wow. that area. Yeah. Uh, your, you know, your hangout stations with shade and with, um, you know, uh, some beverage, uh, you know, everybody yeah. needs a frosty adult beverage to yeah, yeah. rehydrate after pickleball. Yes, sir. So, um, you Love know, just, just to finish off the area, <laughs> make it, make it a great place to hang. That's awesome, man. I, I've been in a couple different places and there's, you know, you're a big, one of the reasons I, I talked to this gentleman, I actually interviewed for a job with him, uh, a while back and amazing man and impressed the heck out of me. The guy that I got that Alex Fox guy, he got super amazing that got the director position, but this is uh, Chris Cater from, from Savannah, Georgia, the Landings club, man, we're glad you came on. It's awesome. So if somebody's listening to this, uh, when they listen to it, it was future pickleballers, tennis proers, or I just had a paddle ball, had pa paddle professional from the UK on for you. Amazing man. Okay. Um, and, um, you know, just if somebody, it, it, did you, do, do you, recommend all your pros get certified or do you, there's no right or wrong answer just in case somebody knows what to expect do, do you believe in a certain certification or what are your thoughts on on your on your pros having certifications and education um look i i'm 100 percent behind uh certification um you know it from a from a club standpoint and from you know from a a, a dedication standpoint it, it shows you're serious about it you know you're not just the you know the sure. the guy or the gal who's um who can hit a ball and, and talk to somebody you've, you've taken the steps to go through a, a certification, you know, protocol. Um, so of our 11 pros on staff, uh, nine of us 
are pickleball certified. Um, so there are two who are tennis exclusive holdouts, uh, but our, <laughs> our pickleball professionals, you know, our pickleball professionals are, are PPR certified. And then, uh, and then we've got another um, seven of us who are uh, dual threats, I believe you call us, tennis and pickleball. So I love this guy. When I grow up, I want to be like Chris. Or when Chris comes, yeah, I'm right. 49, man. He's 45. What are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> that's good. You're stuff. crushing it, man. That, that's good stuff, man. I, I'm a big believer in that. And I, I was of, of the mindset when I, wherever I've always been, I've always said, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, you got it. No matter, you know what I mean? Because, you know, you go through the motions and you're like, oh, God. But once you do it, there is a sense of self worth, and it keeps you up to up to date with, with everything else. So you know what you put in is what you get out. I love that. Absolutely. Man. So, yep. so right now it's 2015. That's that's an amazing time. I got into 2018 with, and you know I have Seymour Rifkin as the mentor. He, he started the IPT. Sure. I, I, I think the world of him, and he likes me for some unknown reason. I have no idea why, but I had him on uh, a few weeks back, and um, again, so, uh, well, good. Awesome. Um, so let me ask this question: um, What so far? Uh, what's your current focus with with pickleball at your club? Juniors, adults? What do you have? Leagues or what's going on there? You know what? That's a that's a that's a good question. Um, you know, with the club and, and, and the landings club is huge. So it's trying to balance out all the different dynamics. You know, you've got, a, we've got a, a strong contingent of really uh, go getter. I, I want to play tournaments. I want to compete at the highest level. I want to get better, all that stuff. And, and I've got to keep them happy and satisfied. But then I've got a, you know, a whole mountain of people, you know, the lion's share of our membership are, they're, they just want to play in their social groups. Yeah. They're not looking to go compete. They're not traveling to, you know, to Texas to play in the next big tournament. Um, they just, they just want to play with their buddies all the time. Yeah. Um, so, and then, and then, you know, we're cracking into the youth game as well with, Great. um, you know, some, uh, a, a good amount of programming through the summer. And then we're going to roll out a, a, an after school, uh, awesome. program all through the, the year. But for us, it's balancing that, how much do we program? How much do we put in for lessons and clinics and, and events while we still make sure that our members can play with the people they want to play with when they want to play and they're not fighting for, you know, court time that yeah. we're that we are cannibalizing too much, you yeah. know? Yeah, that's well said. Perfectly said. I um so uh let me ask this question. So um if you were a uh um either um if if you were Someone new's coming to the sport, and I like to ask people this: What is something that, what's one rule that you like to tell your players that stands out the most? You think is very important that they need to know when they first walk on that court. As a new player coming yeah. on the court, really, new, really, new you, rule. I'd say yeah. probably three oh three five. You know what I mean? Or yeah. whatever you think. It's it's your it's your call. Sure. You can, beginner okay. or immediate. Uh, it, you know what? One thing. Look, uh, um. The hardest thing for people to, uh, you know, to grasp, I think, is is um, is the soft game. Mm -hmm. You know, the the touch, the finesse, the hands, yes, the sir. resets, all that stuff. Um, and and if you look at a lot of, you know, three o three five play, yeah. I I don't know about your neck of the woods, but <laughs> we don't see a whole lot of soft game coming out there. Um, <laughs> no. So uh, I think the number one most important thing is is I tell everybody expect the ball to come at you really hard all the time mm -hmm. that's good and and be ready for it yeah and if it comes at you slow you've got time yeah but but if you're expecting somebody to you know to drop or to to yeah. you know dink or no. that don't you can always <laughs> adjust to that but you you better get your helmet on because they're gonna <laughs> smash it at you um i love it get your helmet on they're gonna smash it at you that's what i love from chris Kidd. Yeah. that's perfect man well, that's true though it's it's right it's right up your alley I had to hit, hit, hit into a group this morning after my lesson and hitting everything hard. And they said, why are you hitting the ball so soft? I said, well, who's winning the points? And then they kind of looked at me. <laughs> I mean, I, wouldn't be, I don't like to show off. I was raised never to be like that, to be humble, and that's just how it is. Uh huh. And so um, I was just block, block, boom. And they were breathing out of breath. I said, you out of breath? They go, yes. I said, well, then here's the, that's why you need to learn to change the pace and reset. Have you watched uh -huh. the, I said, you watched your pickleball since 2022? And they're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> It's all uh -huh. right. That's good. Okay, well, so yeah. You, you know, you you're you're humble, which is why you you phrased it as a question. Who's winning all the points? Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, are you okay? Right? Well, I didn't want to come off like a smart aleck, but yeah, that's true. Yeah. I just said I just said who's winning all the points. And I said that. Yeah. I said I'm not trying to be awesome. 
I'm just trying to show you the mistake I made when I first started playing five years ago. And that's how I said it. <laughs> yep. Uh, all right. Well, who's your favorite player right now? Um, favorite player? I mean, yeah, that guy, Ben John's pretty darn good, ben right? Ben John's, yeah. So, okay. right. you, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of a GOAT guy, a goat guy. In, in any sport, whether it's female? pickleball or, um, you know, and, and uh, what Anna Lee Waters might be, she, she might be the absolute GOAT. She's, Ever she, right, Chris, she's a beast. All right, what's your favorite drill to do? Um, favorite drill, I'm a uh, I'm like the the mid court reset drill. I love you, man. You know, I get I get the guy at the uh, at the net. I get Alex at the net smashing him at me, and I I've got to do the work and try to reset it reset. and drop it back in front of him. Um, Spoken like if, a if you can volleyer. if you can do that if you can do that you you can hang in. Reset the point. That's right. You back that back five. No doubt. I call it the back five or back six. That's awesome. Okay. So, um, what's your favorite shot? Mine's the lob on the outside. <laughs> the lob. At, at, the, at the offensive <laughs> zone, just to piss people off. <laughs> that's evil. Curtis, that's evil, brother. Um, well, no, uh, my, I, I'd have to say a third shot drop from anywhere on the court. Top go, spin, under spin. Nice. Um, that's my that's my bread and butter. I've never heard of the so. That's good. See, there you go, Chris. CK1, that's your name, brother. CK1. <laughs> CK1. There, there we go. go. <laughs> All right. Well, cool. Love it. Uh, so, uh, where's your favorite? What's your favorite story about pickleball so far? Mine, I'll tell you what mine is. Mine was getting my butt handed me by Matt Lazarine in 2018 at Royal Oaks in uh, two sets because I, would, I wouldn't let anything bounce. And um, it was about a 10-minute match. <laughs> 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 Truth. <laughs> what's yours? Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. All right. So, um, look, I, uh, truth be told, I don't play a ton of tournaments. Wrong, uh, I, I'm, I'm working a lot, but I, I will say, uh, the first tournament I played, it was in Griffin, Georgia. Nice. I don't know. It must've been 20, 2016 or 2017. Wow. And, um, and, and I went up there with one of my, uh, one of the other pros from the club and we thought we were going to do pretty well. And, and, and we did, I think in our, our pool play, we finished second, mm -hmm. but I was, I was kind of, I was a little upset because uh -oh. we lost to this team. And the, one of the guys on the team, he had some funky looking stuff like way Western grips. And, and he held the paddle a little funny on a forehand, <laughs> backhand, especially dinking. I'm like, and, and he torched us. I'm thinking, what the heck? Exactly. So, you know, it, it was maybe two years later, somebody who must have been doing their homework on me because they scoured far and wide to find <laughs> any result that I might had. And. And they said, oh, you know, uh, in that tournament, you, you, you lost to Riley Newman. What? I, okay. I, I did. I didn't know that. You know, that was a long time ago. And, you know, sure enough, Riley Newman crushed me, uh, <laughs> you know, many, many years ago. But, uh, but I, yeah. I got a so story that was a good on that one. one. I, got a, I played a kid named Nicholas Crowell, and he was from, um, I think, Lubbock. I used to play men's open. Uh, in Texas back in the late 90s and mid to late 90s when I was in college. And, and I, this kid named Nick Crow kept kicking my ass. And he's, he was a great young, but he was like 15 and I'm 21, you know, <laughs> maybe 14. I don't know. He was good. And, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't a jerk. He was just a badass player. So sure as crap, about six years later, I look on I, uh, a kid who I taught as a junior was playing for UT. He played number one at UT, men's singles and doubles. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, he was pretty good, yeah, huh? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, I love that. A respectable story. loss. <laughs> good story. Yeah. Uh, I wish I could see him. Well, that's cool. Um, all right. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's go to uh, your story. Where are you from? Uh, just family. Got family there. You just tell us who you are, what you are. Okay. So uh, I grew up in Geneva, Ohio, a little rural farm town, um, about wow. three thousand people. Wow. So there's there's more members at the club, uh, at the Landings Club, than there were people in my hometown. Um, <laughs> Grew up playing tennis uh, and other sports, too. My dad was my coach, two younger brothers. We all played in college um, and, uh, and, and stuck with it forever. My youngest brother, he's still in coaching. He's college coach for William & Mary. Nice, and I'm on the private side of things yeah. in the club world. You're doing awesome. um, and now, uh, now, you know, now I've got two kids of my own, awesome. uh, wife and two kids. So Heidi, my lovely wife, who's, uh, who puts up with me all the time. I got some, I and then. You. Yeah, they're they're saints, aren't they? No, they put up us and let us do this racket yes. sports things, especially this thing now. Give me a Christmas. Uh huh. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, our wife. And then, uh, 
you know, two kids, Olivia and Thomas, oh, uh, who are both, uh, they're playing tennis and pickleball and swimming <laughs> and who knows what else. That's awesome. um, and they're, they're about to hit their, uh, their new school orientation this year. So uh, that's, it's all good. That's great. Yeah, we got, a yep. fifth, we got an almost 15-year-old, and he's at his freshman uh, thing right now. That's, a, that's, that's me and my boy CK1 got going on. He's, a, he's talking to me, and I'm talking to him. We're missing our kids' orientations. No lie. <laughs> um, well, it's not by choice. It's just by chance. So, um, yes. all right. So now we're going to go to our, our last segment, which I like to call In the Kitchen. Uh, this one kind of okay. tells us a funny side about the man CK1, Chris Cater. Uh, I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll, I'll tell you what I'm jamming with uh, right now. Um, my favorite band or song was I, I listen to them a lot. It's called the Heavy. Sh- the Heavy. It's called Short Change Hero and the House. That I've said this before. The Dirt built back in 2009. It's a great English band. They're really good. They're kind of like the Mighty Mighty Boston's, except not okay. as, not as skyish. They're pretty cool. They're they're similar. Gotcha. But they're really good. What are you jamming to? Okay. Uh, so I'm a uh, by by way of my South Florida influence. I'm a huge Pitbull fan. There you go. So, I you, love it. You, <laughs> You can't go wrong with Pitbull. I, I think there's maybe like 35 different songs that are all fantastic. So uh, He's a Pitbull. Yeah. I love it. Pitbull, right. no doubt. All right, so what's your favorite movie? My well, A favorite movie that, that you've watched recently. Mine's A Fish Called Wanda. I watched that, and I laughed. My took us off, me and my wife did, with John Cleese and uh, Kevin Klein. Good movie. Okay. Uh, so so I, I my wife doesn't laugh at this. She usually slaps me. But uh, every time um, – Every time one of the one of the uh, born identity movies is on TV, I I I usually say to her, I don't know if we've seen this one, (laughs) and I watch it. She's like, Yeah, yeah, right. You've seen this one sixty five times along with the other seven movies. So born identity, that's that's good stuff, man. I love that. No one said that one. That's great. All right. So, what's your favorite podcast, dude? I listen to one called Discs on an Island. All right, and this guy Ben, Ben Nichols, I just had on. He's from the UK. He told me to listen to that. What it talks about what uh, what records people would listen to if they're stranded on an island. It's a pretty cool little jam, dude. I've never heard of it. Okay, I do now though. This uh, I I'll put that on my list. Like I'm a uh, I'll put that on my list. I'm a I'm a NBA guy. I love the NBA, so I I, I tend to gravitate towards like a Bill Simmons podcast. Is, nice. Uh, nice. Yeah. Bill Simmons. Yeah. That's good. See, the whole idea is people people get this and whatever you know. Here's the other thing we do for for the pros and the players and industry leaders that come on this, and buddies and dudes and dudes all gets dudettes and all that, uh, is this gives you kind of an idea of something new to listen to. And that's one of the reasons the show is. It's all about your journey, your story, and it inspires people. That's why I love to, love doing this. And so, all right. So, what's your favorite team, brother? You got a favorite sports team? Well, uh, um, it is America's team, right? The Dallas Cowboys. Nah, I'm from Kansas. Yes. Yeah. I was, born, oh, I was born in Topeka. My uh, Midwest uh, boy. Grew up in Missouri. Man. My wife's from Leveland. She loves that's West Texas. She probably she love it. She loves uh Cowboys. Okay. You, what about, okay, what so, about basketball? Uh basketball? Don't say basketball the would be Don't say a, the any team that LeBron James is currently on. Ah, uh, you like the heat when they beat us, you jerk. <laughs> oh man, are you kidding me? My Mavericks. He, the, the, that was that was maybe the best, you know, four years of uh, of my uh, my pro sports fandom, yeah. uh, because I took my talents to South Beach, and all my <laughs> buddies in Ohio were uh, were burning LeBron jerseys. What? And, and, and meanwhile, I was sending them all a new uh, LeBron James number <laughs> six heat jersey. So not the not the new yeah, one, the cheapy man. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Yeah, that's, so that's great, man. Yeah, you got any favorite pets? We got two doggies, a Labradoodle and a Havanese named Gus and Chief. Okay, uh, so my 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 wife and daughter have a uh, a Cavapoo named Penny, um, but I remind them that I prefer fish because I don't have to take them for a walk. So <laughs> fish, that's yeah, cool. Fish. You, got, you got fish? Uh, I've had fish. Okay, and when the fish doesn't make it, here, all right, Curtis. So here's a fish didn't make it. My daughter was very, very upset many years ago. Mm-hmm. So I, I, on the fly, I, I said, well, come on. We went to the upstairs toilet in the upstairs oh, room oh and, and flushed him so he could be a little closer to heaven upstairs. I remember that different strokes, but, remember this, but, but, <laughs> but when, when they, they put the goldfish in the, in the toilet, it goes, he who comes from the sea must return to the sea. And they flush the toilet. <laughs> Down they go. Uh-huh. <laughs> Fish are so easy. Oh, they God. really are. <sighs> <laughs> Guys, a trip. All right, so let's 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 go make it even funnier. What's um, 
what's something funny about what's something about you that's unique or funny that you can think anybody anybody would know? Uh, I would say that uh, what I tell people is I have a 1995 Jeep Wrangler that I've had since 1999, and I love it. It was my first girlfriend, real girlfriend, but then I met my wife in 2000, and so we still have it though. <laughs> Okay, that's a classic. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's how old I am. Um, <laughs> it's a classic. You're driving a classic, yeah. Curtis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it is almost, I think, right? Yeah. After 25 years, you can get one of those license plates that says uh, classic. Yeah, thanks, TK1. Yeah. Shut up. Tell us something weird about you. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. Um, all right. Uh, so uh, I I do have a um, kind of a, a an under-the-radar talent. Uh, I am the lone person in my household who can sew. What? So you lose a you lose a button, you 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 break a stitch, uh, your favorite stuffed animal gets a rip in it. There you um, go. That would be that would be yours truly fixing up that that you know piece of equipment. Well, sweet. So he sews. That's uh, awesome. He likes people. You know, he sews, and he he has a. I mean, you can't beat this guy. He's his initials are CK. So that's what I love the most. You don't hear that combination very often, do you? No, I've never heard that. Pitbull, that's kind of weird. Sewing okay. pickleball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, no, you, if you some of my back shows, there's people who talk about being Walmart watches at one in the morning. I'm like, have you drank? They go, no, I don't drink. I'm like, well, that's even weirder. Why are you in there at one in the morning? <laughs> but uh, there's other ones. I mean, there's, oh, God, there's so many. But uh, all right, let's fish. So I'll tell you what, let's wrap up here. So uh, if someone wanted to get in touch with you, um, other through that amazing man named, named oh, what's his name? I know his name. I know it. Chris Hag Hagman. Hagman. Chris yes, Hagman. That's how I found him. Yeah. That's how I found yep. uh, Mr. Cater here. The recruiting service, Chris Hagman, amazing man. But uh, how would people get in touch with you if they wanted to talk about a job or or maybe want to? They're moving there and they're thinking, what, what, how do I, how would I join that? Or you know what I mean? How would they get in touch with you? Yep. So look, you can always shoot me an email at, at chris.cater at landingsclub.com. But then you can catch, uh, you can always flag me down through any of the Landings Club social outlets, whether it's uh, Facebook or Instagram. Uh, I, I think I think our club's venturing into the TikTok world as well. Oh, yeah. um, so What's we're we're out there. Yep. What's your handle uh, on, on on his landings? I'm gonna follow it. Landings. It, it the landings club or the landings golf and athletic club. So we're out there. There it is. There it is. The landings club. Cool. Perfect. I'm gonna follow so, it. I'm gonna follow it. Yes, indeed. Have some pickleball Get on us there and follow me. You know what? At Reese Rack Sports. And, done i will do it and that curtis you know one last thing I, I don't know if i touched on it we've got um we've got a a big tournament coming up in november november 3rd 4th 5th mm -hmm. we've got our seventh uh annual seventh edition of the special pops charity open oh, wow. which is um a pickleball tournament we've been doing obviously for this is the seventh year uh -huh. um about 400 people or so uh, participate annually from I think a range of like seven states they'll come in and and uh, and play it's a great tournament and this year we've got our first ever prize money uh, division going on so we've got a five thousand dollar purse wow. for a um, a four five and above um, open what's, division what's it called so, again we're gonna tag it what's it called the uh, special pops charity open okay yeah, we'll tag that. So, on the, and also, the YouTube channel will uh, subscribe to us because, listen, whenever you put on there, hey, you can send us stuff anytime you want, CK, and we'll add it. Done. We do short from Chris Cater of the Landings Club. We'll, since you're on the show, you're a part of the show. It's our show. So I'm saying when you send me stuff, it goes on the Insta or it goes on anybody listening. I know I'm supposed to, supposed to say at the beginning, but I don't really give a crap. If you, if you waited this long, you're invested, and we're going to give you some good – we're going to give you some – what do they call it? Easter eggs. Yeah, Easter egg, bro. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, man, I appreciate you. I can be Reese at Curtis at ReeseRacketSports.com or on Insta at Reese Racket Sports, or just type get on the World Wide Web and put in Curtis Reese, R-E-E-S-E, -E -E, Pickleball. Something's bound to populate. Uh, but anyway, listen, I appreciate your time, brother. And, hey, uh, congratulations on your new orientation, new school for your kiddos, man. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, life is good, and um, we keep going. It's send, a lot of fun, Curtis. Send me some stuff, bro. We'll put you on, okay? You got it. I appreciate it. The Chris Cater. Peace. <laughs> See you, man. Hey, Best day ever.